Hello YouTube fans, Fan on a Budget, back again. Uh, this time without the uh, the regular fan and makeup routine. I know I've done it a thousand times, probably already seen them all. This time I'm going to show you and talk about a little bit about making your own fan and prosthetic. Instead of building it on your face like we've been doing this whole time, or even using gelatin to, to do the, uh, the same effect really, we're going to talk about making a mold, and pouring the mold, and then making your own fan and prosthetic that you can just go to your face and be on your way. So it's a lot easier, uh, a lot less complicated to, uh, to actually put on, and it can in some ways give you a better look, and it'll definitely give you a more consistent look too. So here's what I got. This is a slush latex mold, and, and by slush latex I mean that it's liquid latex. It's not foam latex, it's not gelatin or silicone, anything like that. Uh, it's just liquid latex put painted into a mold. You let it dry, and this is what you get. And this is what I'm wearing right now. I'm going to let you see that makeup. Uh, both these pieces are prosthetics that I made using the, uh, the slush latex routine. And I think it came out pretty well this time. I'm actually pretty excited with, with how it worked. I actually made these molds a couple of weeks ago. Well, this one I've had for a while, but uh, the cheek piece is new. And basically, what I did, uh, and this is how you do it on the cheap. That's what I'm all about, right? I don't have a life cast for myself. In fact, I, I would like to, but I don't. So, instead, I use Bob here. Uh, it's been very helpful. So. If you have a, a styrofoam head, it actually can't work. It's uh, a little bit on the ghetto side, but it, it, it functions, so I, I go with it. What I did, as you can see, I outlined everything uh, in Sharpie that I wanted to, uh, to basically build up. Gave myself a border to work with so I didn't go outside that area. Unfortunately, if you're working off of something that is not a life cast on your face, you have to be kind of careful because what fits this one may not fit me, may not fit you. So I try to estimate to the best of my ability as far as the sizing goes. And I uh, sculpted a deformity, which you can see on me right now, using oil-based clay. So if you have oil-based clay, it's the best because it doesn't dry out very fast, and it gives you a lot more time to work to sculpt. So, so once you've got the, uh, the sculpt going on your, on your face, whether it's your life cast or your styrofoam head, whatever you're using, uh, you know, work it. Quick tip, if you have a, an orange peel or a texture stamp of some kind, throw that onto the scalp as well. Give it kind of a more skin-like appearance. Don't make it look perfectly smooth because skin's not perfectly smooth. So it's all about realism to make it work. So here's a picture of my completed sculpt on the face. Alright, so once you have your sculpt done, your next step is to basically pour a mold of it using plaster. But before you do that, you have to sort of seal it off. So with a slush mold like that, where you're pouring the plaster directly onto it, uh, this is where it gets really ghetto. I put clay around the base, create like a little fence of clay, and then I stuck uh, aluminum foil in there, and I'll show you a picture of that in a second, but uh, that basically created a, a barrier to keep all the, the plaster in. So here's what that looked like. And once I got that sort of barrier set up for the plaster, I went through with a, with a release agent. And a release agent is basically something that prevents the clay from sticking to the plaster once it's dried. So it is, it's a lube. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, I'd probably go water-based, but uh, I actually have something from FX Supply, and that's the letters fxsupply.com, and that's what they do. They are mold-making website. So uh, I got a, spe a specialized release agent from them, painted it on all the clay and all the surrounding area, and then I poured the plaster in. And then you just give it a couple days to dry and set, and then you can remove it from from your, your clay and from your face and then you can kind of set it out and give it a few more days to really cure and, and totally set up completely uh, because a few of them even though you think they're dry they're not quite ready to pour anything into yet because they still have to cure 
So I'd say four or five days is probably not a bad, not a bad bet, safe bet. And then uh, from there, once it's ready to go, this is what this one looks like. This is my cheek piece mold, and this is what we call a negative mold uh, because once you put pull. Uh, when I figure out how to speak English, I'll tell you. Uh, once you put something in here and you pull it out, it's going to be a positive. Which is what I'm wearing right here. So this is the negative mold. And this is what special latex stuff is really good for. Or even gelatin. You can probably do this with gelatin here too. Uh, but all you have to do is, is paint in some latex, the latex. Not doing well with the English today. Put thin layers in so that they, they dry quicker. And if you have a really deep area like this, uh, you don't want to have it solid latex because it doesn't move very well. I found that out when I tried doing prosthetics a long time ago. Uh, I filled up all the deeper areas totally with latex and I was stunned to find out that it, it didn't move. Figure. So I didn't use those late uh, prosthetics at all. They weren't very real. So instead, and to get it lighter and moving more naturally, I put a couple layers of latex down, thin layers, threw a little bit of cotton in there to, uh, to stuff this area, and then I sealed it with another layer of, of latex. So there is cotton in here, and it's actually, it's great, it's working awesome. Uh, gives you the shape that you want without uh, the weight. And it moves very, very well. So, I'm pretty pleased. Um, one thing to realize though, if you're working with special latex molds, when you pull them out, <laughs> unlike other other options like foam latex, foam gelatin, uh, straight up gelatin or, or silicone. Slush latex molds or prosthetics don't usually blend very well into the skin. All right, the, the thicker the edge, the worse it's going to look. So your edges need to be paper thin and irregular. Don't make them look totally uniform uh, and straight because it's going to be very noticeable. So they can be jagged and uh, again thin as possible to really help you uh, blend them in and look believable. I think this actually turned out pretty well. So, and as far as putting them on, it's pretty straightforward. You get something like ProSave. Again, um, ProSave. Not spirit gum, because spirit gum, if you sweat on it, it'll crystallize. And then once it crystallizes, it loses its adhesive quality. So, uh, yeah. Prose is the way to go. You put some on the center of the prosthetic and on your cheek. You secure it that way and then you start working from the inside out as far as gluing it down. And then once it's glued down all the way to the edges, uh, what you do is you take a little bit of Prose, like on a Q-tip, and just go around the tops of the edges. And then once it's dry, you powder that and it helps create a more uh, believable blend into your skin. So. My tip of the day, and honestly, it cut the makeup time in about a half <laughs> for me. I was really shocked to get out of here in about an hour. So, awesome. Uh, definitely the way to go, and that way you can kind of create your own look. Do whatever design you want. It's not just for Phantom, it's for a Werewolf, it's for any kind of character that you want. It gives you a very consistent look, and you can pull them and paint them the night before. And when it comes to actually putting them on, it's only going to take you a, a little while to, to put them on and, and go. So, there you are. <laughs> Phantom Prosthetics Homemade. Pretty cool. Way to go. If you have any questions, let me know. Phantom at phantomandabudget.com. I'll update the site with, uh, with more pictures on this procedure. And that's phantomandabudget.com. And hope everybody has fun. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.